restaurant company, Mitchell and Butler's. Uh, I think I've actually probably paid quite a bit of money to that. <laughs> um, and you play football for Clapham United. And uh, it says here, the proud mother of a miniature sausage dog called Cosmo. That in itself deserves a round of applause. <laughs> And more recently, our remit has extended to tackling homophobia worldwide as well. So, back over in Blighty, the sunny shores of Blighty, um, our kind of main three strategic games we've got home, at work, and at school. So, uh, you probably haven't managed to avoid our support of equal marriage recently and some of the legislative landmark uh, achievements that we've got under our belt as well. Um, it's our involvement with schools, both primary and secondary school, and about teaching young people about being able to really celebrate difference uh, as well. And then in my team, uh, the workplace team, really kind of supporting Britain's employers to make sure that they can create workplaces where everyone feels able to be themselves um, as well. And it's a, a pretty big year for us this year. Um, so we are celebrating our 10th birthday later on this year. I'm sure there will be some form of bubbles and nibbles for you all to come and enjoy at one point as well. So 10 years ago we launched our Diversity Champions program and that was in response to uh, for the very first time gay people being legally afforded protection against discrimination in the workplace. 10 years ago. Um, seems pretty crazy that that was only 10 years ago but here we are now. Um, and really kind of when you look at that legislative landscape back then as well, you know, only three years earlier had the repeal of gay people actually being able to serve in the military lifted. Um, we were in a very different climate, no civil partnerships, no Goods and Services Act to protect gay people from accessing things like hotels, bars, the rest of it. Um, certainly equal marriage seemed a million miles away back then um, as well. Uh, at the time when we launched the programme, we were working with 35 employers in the UK. We're now working with 620. Uh, so we've had a little bit of a, a growth spurt uh, in, the, in recent years, um, which is fantastic to see. Just so many employers actually engaged in wanting to support um, uh, lesbian, gay, and bisexual staff, and also extending that out towards their customers as well. Um, but it hasn't necessarily meant that we've rested on our laurels, and certainly uh, in our Living Together report that we produced last year, um, I've put this statistic up here, and uh, it's quite staggering still. Uh, but uh, you got polling on behalf of Stay More for 2,000 people. Um, saw that in the last five <coughs> years, uh, 240,000 people um, of working age had witnessed verbal homophobic bullying in the workplace, and 800,000 people had witnessed physical homophobic bullying in the workplace, um, which is quite a, a shocking amount, and that's kind of your worst case scenarios and the stuff that's actually going reported um, as well. Um, so certainly, can we rest on our morals in this day and age where we're almost on the cusp of securing probably that last piece of the equality jigsaw or equal marriage? Uh, no. And certainly kind of from research findings back in 2008 when we kind of interviewed um, uh, just around 100 people uh, in both private and public sector workplaces, asking them about their experiences at work. And I think, yes, you've got the examples there of verbal homophobic bullying, physical homophobic bullying, but then there's the more subtle kind of cultural elements that have an impact on gay people at work as well. And, and these are just some of the findings that kind of really came out um, from that study. 
Um, I think some of them, you know, lack of senior leadership, um, certainly not shying away from that at the cooperative. Um, here, great role model to, to follow as an employer. Um, but also, uh, one of the things, the key things that kind of really sticks out to me there as well is around a lack of positive role models in the workplace. So people that, you know, sit a certain level of the organisation, but actually show up anywhere where you know, visually you can actually see them showing up in the workplace. And I think there's, there's one quote that came from our recent role model research that really kind of stood out for me, which was um, one of those individuals saying that, you know, how can you aspire to be something that you don't see? And uh, certainly when uh, I started my career with Pickles and Butlers, a place that Chris has spent lots of money at, uh, that's something that was just incredibly lacking in every shape, way, and form. There was there was no one that looked like me um, working there, and uh, much to my manager's you know, dismay that I'd never hook up with a barrel boy, um, Colton. Uh, it was lovely, but uh, really wasn't for me for one reason or the other. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, they, they were the exact things that I kind of really needed early on in my career to think, you know, what this is actually my way forward. That's where I want to to end up. Uh, and move towards, and I think things like colleagues' lack of awareness. When you look at our staff feedback survey, we had over 9,000 respondents, and only 48 uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual people, 48% uh, of those 9,000 respondents, thought that their heterosexual colleagues were well informed on LGBT issues. So there's still this kind of marker that we have to overcome, and it's events like this tonight um, that aren't just shared internally with organisations, but I look at the number of you in here tonight on the bank holiday weekend that really help push the needle of change. Um, so really strongly encourage more of these to come forward and certainly kind of help us shift um, you know, where we are in, uh, in England today. And hopefully, uh, as a, you know, a nation, the UK we can also influence other cultures around the world as well. Because it can move. So um, I mentioned the really subtle marketing that was going on earlier on uh, today. Uh, it would be quite difficult for me to come here today as the client account lead on retail and consumer goods. Um, and uh, also just uh, you know, from my previous life in retail as well, uh, to not avoid the topic of how well retail performs as a sector in our, our workplace quality index and also within our diversity champions programme. And uh, when I joined SOMA about three and a half years ago, um, it was a very different environment. So you can see that only four of the 600 employers that we worked with represented retailers. Um, okay, quite shocking. Second most shocking thing that I saw, only one retailer featured in the top 100 ever. Uh, I minus the, the first that we started because it was literally do you have a policy. Um, where nine retailers did feature, in fact, one didn't want to be named in the top 100 um, as well. Uh, another sign of the times that we are. Uh, living. Um, and uh, it kind of you know, started me thinking, okay, so we don't know Stonewall, is it that you know, maybe they're doing stuff but we just don't know about it. So um, I started a, a few calls and meetings with um, with employers to kind of you know, find out what it what was it about it that you know are they doing stuff, are they not doing stuff? Um, I'd like to say that we've definitely moved on from a different place and that three years down the line uh, I don't quite get the same response as that. I had some interesting conversations with people who said, oh, yeah, it sounds great, but we haven't got any gay people working here. So, you know, it's really not for us. It's interesting, you kind of employ thousands and thousands of staff. But what? That wasn't like, didn't they? Then there was the other end of the spectrum. It was like, oh, no, we're really gay friendly. We've got loads of gay people that work here. It's like, oh, do you monitor sexual orientation of your workplace then? No. How do you know? Oh, you know, you can spot on the mile or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, there was the one really interesting conversation that I had with uh, someone once, which uh, went somewhere along the lines of, oh, we're really, really gay friendly. And I was like, oh, right, okay, so what kind of things are you doing? Or what, what people can wear what they want to work. Um, there would be, because I was also trying to follow this trend of thought as well. And, uh, I was like, all right, okay, so how, how exactly does that have an impact for, for gay people in the workplace then? And uh, well, you know, it means you can come, you can come, and I quote, you can come dressed as a gay, you can come dressed as a transgender. Uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can only tell you, kind of cut the corner and then kind of come back to them in a few years, uh, let them kind of pick up the pace by themselves. So, it, you know, it's really nice to see so many employers in the room tonight. It's really important, uh, you know, kind of encouraging to look at 
the stats behind me now, which you, know, you can see that we've travelled to London with employers that are working in retail to 12 out of 620. Still a way to go when you consider that the uh, retail industry employs 3 million people in the UK. So I'm pretty sure we're not quite there in terms of representative, and uh, that's why events like tonight can be really key. So hopefully you'll take messages back to your workplaces if you're not really working with us. Um, Landmark year for the cooperative this year as well, being the first ever retailer to make it into our top 10 gay friendly employers uh, in the UK, which you know Liz kind of mentioned this earlier on around uh, you know kind of not doing it as a result of a tick box exercise. There's not anything in the index that they do just because they want to get to this number three spot in our index. Um, for them, I think you can all see tonight that this is really just about a lot of hard work. Um, I think the right culture in the workplace as well, and really just kind of wanting to push needle change, you know, beyond uh, beyond the workplace as the event is uh, titled tonight. Um, it, it's taken a lot for them to get there, and I really hope that others uh, will start giving them some competition in the workplace. Probably they do as well. Um, Paul actually laid the thought it down about a year and a half ago for that as well, um, which kind of leads very nicely on onto the next program to check out. Um, and uh, you know, for us, I, I really can't say how excited I am. There's been a lot of times that I've been excited to stay over the last three and a half years. Um, but tonight, on the, on the way up, and in the build up, me and Thomas have been exchanging numerous emails. Uh, uh, a lot of kind of in the last week has moved to kind of it being almost like Christmas with seven more sleeps, five more sleeps, two more sleeps, one more sleep uh, on the sign off uh, to our emails. Lots of Twitter activity. So, um, you know, uh, as mentioned earlier on, you have got hashtag checkout. Uh, there is the at checkout account, so do follow them. Uh, follow us at Stonewall UK as well. Um, the reason why I'm so excited about this is it's, it's a bit of a first. And when I looked at my retail sector and wanting to promote this kind of push forward, and then I was looking at you know my other colleagues who maybe looked after banking or law or health or housing, and I was like, you've got so much. What do I have? Um, and I looked at kind of what had been achieved through Interbank and Interlaw, when they all kind of worked collaboratively as a sector, what, what was the end result of that? Um, and they were both established because prior to that, that sectors were really poorly represented in our, in our um, top 100 employees list and throughout our workplace quality index. So it was a major driver to work together, an opportunity to share best practice, um, an opportunity to widen the reach and support more gay people. Um, and I think you know, in terms of the reach of checkout, you know, already the followers on checkout are almost mm -hmm. out of Interlaw and Interbank that have been established for years. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the point that we absolutely supersede that. There should be hundreds of thousands of people, if you think about it, in terms of statistics, 6% of our population estimated to be lesbian, gay, or bisexual. Um, you know, it works at around maybe 180,000 gay people that work in retail, so it would be nice to have all of them following us on, on Twitter. And, and take advantage. I'm not going to say too much more in case I do any spoilers for later on, but certainly as Stonewall, you know, this is one of the most exciting things that uh, could have happened. And a year and a half ago, when we sat down in a room with a handful of retailers talking about, could this work? Is it right for us? Um, to then having a focus group just across the road uh, back in February, um, uh, back in September last year, to now being where we are today, it's fantastic. I can only think of the number of people that we're going to be able to extend open arms out to, to, to support, to connect. Um, it, it's just kind of beyond anything that I could have ever wanted um, at Stonewall. So thank you to everyone that's been involved with that, in particular the cooperative who have just put just the most amount of energy, resource, time, everything into it. You've seen the, the diversity newsletters, the uh, checkout newsletters, on some of the seats around there, you've seen the Twitter account. There's going to be plenty more opportunities like this, and thank you once again for having me.